Thanks. We simply want to say thank you. Um, we have so much gratitude for all of the support that uh, you guys have been giving us for so long. And thank you for your patience and your excitement uh, and um, your inquiring about new music from us, you know, that, uh, that keeps us focused there. So uh, thank you. And we hope you guys love the new record, because we do. <laughs> <laughs>
Hebrew Israel, we begin to build on everything that have nothing to do with us at all. And somebody gave us these labels. Soul actually comes from up out of us, out of our womb. Your mother had a part of it. Your fathers, they are still alive. They gave us soul. And you don't want it. Because you don't understand, you don't comprehend the natural development of a people that leads to their own self-identification. Accept your own and be yourself. The uniqueness in who you are. If I am an orphan, I have no father, I have no mother, I have no family. And nobody adopts me. What, what, must, ha what must happen? I have to start all over from scratch. So the so-called Negro, the colored man, the african Americanist, soul began to rise in us. That word. It came so that we can identify who we are. Our own uniqueness. Starting from scratch. Because we know in our hearts we're not really. We are American citizens by force. This is an involuntary relationship. We know that. And we also know, and even if we are, our ancestors are Native American, if our ancestors are African, makes no difference. We know we are no longer them. We have to be who we are. We look stupid and silly trying to be somebody we've never been. So soul and our oppressor used to tell us we were animals and we didn't have no soul. So it definitely did not come from them. The natural process of where life gives itself its own identification and uniqueness. Stop accepting these hand-me-downs, these leftovers from other people. Be yourself. Be proud in who you are. So soul power unites and can unite all of us under one umbrella no matter how different we are. You can still be an African. You can still be a Christian or atheist or agnostic or whatever you are, but you can come up under the umbrella of soul power as long as you fit the criteria of being a descendant of a slave, having dark skin, born in America. If you have that, that's all you need. And we put all our positive things, everything that we can agree upon under one umbrella so that we as a people can move forward and unite based on that commonality. Oh, y'all don't Oh, come on. Anything other than that is death. Anything other than that is a support in racism. Soul is the essence of life. Soul is life. Racism represents death. And that's all racism has done in all its forms has caused us death suffering. That's all it has caused. Now we can, I can get a little deeper into my understanding of what we can do to build upon this thing we call soul. But I want to say this to us. You don't let your enemy know what you're doing or how you're thinking. Unless you want to use that as a distraction to make him go east when you're really going west. You have to be smart with these people. This is like playing chess. You got to be smart. You're, dealing, you're not dealing with some idiots. Racists are not idiots. They are very smart, intelligent people. Somebody told me, you need to read The Art of War. Didn't they make a movie about that? Don't the, don't the racists know about The Art of War and the strategy behind that? That's dumb. They already know about that. We must be able to use our brain to come up with a strategy, to come up with something the enemy has never seen before. In fact, you can even mix the old with the new. So they will concentrate on the old because if you do the old right, you can be successful. But don't, but just don't like give up the fight because you think, now nah, I got it going on. That's not how it works. Voting is good if you do it right. Getting an education is good. If you do it right, the family structure of husband and wife and child 
is good if you're doing it right. Marches is good if you're doing right. The reason why you're not being successful because you're doing it the way they did it back then. That don't work now. First of all, you don't have the support of the masses of the people. You're going about it the wrong way because you're not uni unified under one umbrella. And when you're successful, the long-term goal should never be to, be to stay comfortable living with racists. You only have two choices. Either you kick the racists in their ass and take the country, which y'all scared to do. Just the thought of it, is, it scares the hell out of some of y'all. Or you take your success and you begin a process to exodus from this place. Because you need to. Because if you don't, then your children, as you see, they get worse and worse. The condition of soul children in this country have never been so foul and messed up in our history. Never. Nasty mouth. Violent. Disrespectful to elders. Just the whole gambit. Our children. And that is because we live with the races. We live with the enemy. And they influence our children. And the only way we can stop that process is you have to get them out from among the bad influence. Just like if little Bobby is a bad influence on little Muhammad, you tell little Muhammad, you can't play with that boy no more. He's a bad influence. Here you are, we've been living with a bad influence going on 500 years and you are not making no attempt to get the hell away from these people. Soul brings us under one umbrella. Soul gives you your life back that was taken a long time ago. How can you defeat racism if you're using the definition, the science, and the language of racism? Whenever you use black, color, black supremacy, African, all that stuff, the only thing you're doing is steady feeding racism. That's where it comes from. If it was not for racism, you would not call yourself black because dark-skinned people did not call themselves black or colored or Negro or African, none of that stuff. It all comes from up out of racism. We need to come up, up out of that. And soul, building on the concept of soul that comes from our own womb, that we named ourselves, didn't come from nowhere else. When you think about soul brothers and sisters, there's only one people that come in your mind and that is the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, those called Negro or African American, us. There's no other people. We are the ones that have soul. But right now we don't have no life because we're all confused and divided and all messed up in the head. But if you really want to get yourself together, nature gave you your answer. It's soul. Come up under that umbrella. Build upon that concept instead of trying to build on something that you never was. Going back to Kemet. Y'all wear these fancy costumes. Running around with your onks around your neck. Very proudly. You comedic, but you act European as hell. You're supposed to be a Hebrew Israelite, but you act European. You still carry their names. You eat, you eat like them. You talk like them. Nigga, kiss my F this, just like your slave master. You ain't changed. You only thing you did was put on a costume. Just because I put on a Batman costume don't make me Batman. You can, you can try to dress like a, an Egyptian. You can dress like a, a ancient Moor or a Hebrew is like. You can dress any way that you want to when it's all said and done. You ain't nothing but a chocolate-covered European. Point blank. So if you're going to be that, at least come up under your own label that you gave yourself, and that was soul. Build on it. Be unique. Love yourself. Accept your own and be yourself. And it's not a righteous Muslim. It's being a soul brother and sister. 
and leave that race crap alone. Black, African, and all this other stuff. That racism, all the, that was forced on us. You cannot defeat racism by being a racist. You can't do it. You make the problems worse. The only thing you do is add fuel to the fire. That's why we have never been united. Because that is our enemy. That's what caused us to be in the condition that we're in to begin with. Don't make any sense. I hope that you can comprehend what I'm saying. If not, we can discuss this some more. How to build upon life. Have you ever went to a car lot and you met the car salesman? And if you are good, well, if the car salesman is good, as soon as the car salesperson see you, hey, how you doing? What a beautiful day. You know, they give you their line. I'm pretty sure many of you have experience that buying a car buying a refrigerator buying an oven just buying something you have a person trying to sell you something and the best salespeople are charming Re remember that word charming they have to be charming a handshake and a smile and some uh, flattery some compliments to the husband and wife or boyfriend and oh you have such nice beautiful children oh oh man I don't have children myself but chances are my children would probably be just like yours the person is so nice you find them charming now they use their charm because they want to make a sale sell your product in this case, it's a car. And now, this person is telling you about this car, and you are looking at the car, and you, you, you see something is wrong with this car. The muffler is falling down, the door don't close like it's supposed to, but you're mesmerized by the charm. And the dealer says, oh, I drive, that. I drive this car every day back and forth to work. It's in excellent condition, and uh, my, my grandmother even drives it now and then, haven't given us a problem, and they lay on the charm, the salesmanship, the charm. And you know better, something is wrong with this vehicle just by sight, but because of the charm, charm, if you are charming enough, you become trusting. So you trust the smile and you trust the, the words of the salesperson. And doesn't necessarily have to be a car salesman. It could be an insurance salesperson telling you all the wonderful things if you get this policy. And if you notice the thing about a charming person, they want things quick and they want things now. They want things quick and they want things now. And the reason for this it's so that you don't have a time to think about what you're doing because you're all caught up in the charm. You are all caught up in the sale. And so they smile and they shake your hand and compliment you and you're flattered and you're so smart and whatever. Sign here on the dotted line. After you get the car, once the charm starts leaving, you begin to realize, I shouldn't have got that car. Something is wrong with that insurance. And then you go back to the charmer and you begin to ask questions about what, you know, about what you bought. Then the charmer, after the charmer got your money, they don't seem to be so charming anymore. Well, uh, all sales are final. Did you read the fine print? We don't cover that. We don't cover that in the insurance policy. Uh, 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 again, uh, did, did you read the fine print? What happened?
happened to all the charm? What happened to all the niceness after they get your money? What are you saying, brother? I'm saying beware of the charmer. Have you heard of a snake charmer? Now, the thing about a snake charmer is that the snake, snakes have poor hearing. They don't hear. But what charms the snake, what charms the snake is the movement. And see what, the, the thing that gets us hooked on the charmer is the movement of the tongue. The movement of the words by the charmer. Even the body movements. When a girl or a woman charms a boy or a man. She talks all sweet and low and all nice. And she might show you a little cleavage and a little of a, little of a thigh. You get caught up in all that. And you just go in your wallet. What, what else do you need? Well, I'm, I'm having problems paying my electric bill. How, how much is it? <laughs> you caught up in the in the booty and the breasts and the thigh and the sweet, sweet voice. I'll pay you back. You never get your money back. Caught up in the charm. Mesmerized by the tongue. There's a brother that some of us know. He was a calypso singer. He played a violin. And one of his patrons in a club called him the charmer. I wonder who that guy is. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? Caught up in the charm. Charm you right into your pocket. And after you go in your pocket, after they get what they want, then the charmer, all the charm leaves. They're not interested in you no more. There was an episode of Good Times and James Evans was going, he was trying to get this job and he knew he had the job because of the Evans charm. And he told his wife, oh, I know I got the job because of the Evans charm. I charmed the pants off that woman. Florida said, you did what? Uh, you, you know, baby, I didn't. You. Oh, yeah. But you can use your charm to charm the pants or the panties right off somebody. Using your charm to get what you want. There are many of you sisters out there right now. You have babies. Not necessarily that you love the daddy, but he was charming at the time. He knew the right things to say, the right things to do. And he might show you a little muscle and, you know, show, you know, you know how guys do. And you fell for it. Next thing you know, you got a baby. The baby was made not because of love, because of lust and because he was charming. And some of you brothers, you are going to court tomorrow. Because you married a sister or other or other gender. <laughs> you know how y'all do it nowadays. Because they was charming. They charmed enough so they could ask the judge, I want half. I want half. The judge, how did you get to how did y'all get in this situation? Because he or she was charming. When you get wrapped up in the charm of things it's easy to get exploited it's easy to get took because of some words because of some movement because of a little cleavage because of a little thigh little sweet words oh you the most beautiful woman in the world if I could just have you oh man that would make my decade <laughs> it's easy to, to get took you lose the sense of reality you don't think that's why people talk fast when they are charming when they are charming to exploit now there are always two sides of the coin 
Because you can be charming and you really love a person. You can be charming, but you really want to put somebody in a decent car, give them some decent insurance, and so forth. But I'm not talking about those who use their charm for good. I'm talking about those who use their charm to exploit, to take advantage of somebody so they can leech off of you. Because when you get took, there's no benefit to the one who gets charmed. You get a broken down car. You get insurance that you, you can't use. You become a member of an organization and you never do see your nation. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> you never see your nation. You don't get nothing except charm. Oh, wow. Some Caucasian people told me back in the day that I had a little charm. They called me a racist, though. But I was a nice racist. I was a charming racist. I, I did not call them devils. I did not call them Lucifer. I respected silver and cordial. But they knew, basically, that I was saying calling them devils or whatever, I guess, in their mind. He's a racist, but he's nice. He's a nice, he's a nice racist because I come off charming. If I am charming, I wish to use my charm to do something good for those of whom I speak with. I'm, I'm not here to exploit you. I hope that when I meet my soul sister, Terry Ellis of In Vogue, I hope that she find me charming and I'm not looking to exploit her however one day you might see us on court TV and I will be in this chair well your honor I think she owes me half sir why do you believe that Miss Ellis owe you half because I was quite charming <laughs> she found me Charming. So beware of the charm. Everybody that smile in your face don't mean you any good. Anybody that tells you a, a sound good story, if it sound too good to be true, chances are it's not. You better beware. So this is a warning to all of us. Beware of the charmer. Don't allow somebody to manipulate you and make you think quickly. Take your time and think about everything. But that's how they do. When they introduce you to black conscious teaching, they want you to accept. Just, just, just accept it. Don't think about it. Just, just go with the flow. Accept Jesus. Except whatever it is. Hurry up. You better beware of people trying to rush you. I need I need time to think about this. Well, for, for what? This is a done deal. We can sign on the dotted line. You won't be sorry. Beware of the charm. There are a lot of them out there. And when you see these charmers. You will notice that there is no benefit to those of whom they have charm. Respect to all those of us who use our charm, who use our articulation, our brilliant oratory, our personality for good. If I was not or did not have your best interest at heart, I would not be telling you and warning you of the charmer or about the charmer because I would be making it more difficult for myself.
I gotta wake up, gotta wake up. You know when I start a video off like this, it's a rap video, I got to go off because there's something that really grinds my gears. So uh, with that said, here we go. Mm. Grinding my gears. I want to respond. And I want to respond not in a civil manner because y'all make me sick. You make me sick to the stomach. Hearing you talk make me want to puke. You sicken me with your garbage. What you talking about, brother? What, what makes you so sick? I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. I really dislike these persons, regardless of race. But most times, it's a Caucasian person and some silly Negroes follow behind. They have the nerve to come and talk about when we, when we as descendants of slaves born in America, when we talk about reparations, when we, when we talk about our suffering in this nation, they want to laugh and make a joke out of things like things have changed or something to that effect. And we are delusional. When we talk about slavery, they want to tell me that was a long time ago. That, oh, that makes me so sick. Here I am, a dark-skinned man, living with pink people or Europeans. That's not natural at all, just to begin with. Something happened that caused this. Wasn't my fault. That's just like a chicken living with some foxes. Chickens ain't supposed to be raised with foxes. Foxes eat chicken. So if you see a chicken running around with a fox, something happens somewhere. Something is wrong. You see a dark-skinned man, whether I am an African or whether I am a Native American that was already here, my ancestry, whatever that is, I'm not supposed to be living with racists. Something happened a long time ago that caused this. And I am a victim of it because I don't carry no traces of my ancestors' past. I speak the tongue of the European. My mindset is like that of the European. I have a European, well, I don't now, but I have a European, I was given a European name. I was given a god that was pink or white, however y'all want to call it, a Caucasian god. That don't make no sense. Something happened to me, to my people a long time ago that caused me to be where I am today. It's not natural. It's not right. Something is wrong. You told us a long time ago. But whatever happened a long time ago affect me today because I'm not supposed to be a dark-skinned man on the outside but a European in the inside. Something is wrong. Then you want to get angry because I don't want to be a European. I would like to be Native American. I would like to be African. I know I'm not a European. Get out of my face with your garbage. Something happened to me, my people, a long time ago that caused me to be the way I am right now. And it's not a good thing. I'm not, I'm not a European. Take that bunny skipping stuff out of here. There's a problem from a long time ago. What is a long time ago? Well, if you are a bee... The average bee only lives to be six weeks old. So if you take the day a day out of the life of a bee, that's a long time. What is a long time to you? You celebrate, in this nation, they celebrate 1776 or whatever, the 4th of July. That was a long time ago. What you celebrating that for? That was a long time ago. No, we, there's no need to celebrate that. Celebrate it for what? But you do. Why? It was a long time ago. According to y'all logic, you should not be celebrating or care or care about anything that happened a long time ago. Your mama was born 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Why y'all celebrating her birthday? She ain't gonna be born again. That was a long time ago, according to y'all logic. To y'all logic, why are you concerned with her birthday? That was a long time ago. And I never hear you suckers talk to Jews like that. When the Jews bring up the Holocaust, that's from the 1940s. That was a long time ago. 
But you let Jews talk about the Holocaust and reparations. Matter of fact, these Jewish people, the state of Israel was established in 1948. They still get reparations from Germany and America and probably some other places. You don't talk about their reparations. You don't have no problem with Jewish reparations and them talking about the Holocaust that happened a long time ago. If it happened really at all. And that's questionable. It was a long time ago. Y'all some silly hypocrites and you're fake. You have a hatred and a dislike for brothers and sisters, soul brothers and sisters in this country. That's your damn problem. You're damn racist and you're filled with hate and silly Negroes that fall up behind you and lick you in the butt thinking they're getting brownie points. I don't need no reparations. Who gives a damn? Nobody want to give you nothing anyway, silly Negro. Give you no reparations. I wouldn't give you nothing either. But I can guarantee you that if the government began to hand out checks, your ass would be in line. Well, I'm, I, I want mine too. See, y'all are fake and you're hypocrites. I don't like fake hypocrites, nasty, you bunch of racists and racist wannabes, bootlickers. Well, let's see. Let's just let's see how old slavery really is. Because according, I believe, to the Congressional Library of Congress, they even have audio tapes of, of slaves going back to the 1930s. Actual slaves were still alive in the 1930s. That was a long time ago too, right? It's older than the Holocaust, 1930. The Holocaust didn't start till the 1940s. It's a long time ago, right? The last slave, the last physical slave died in 1930. And the last child of a physical slave died in 2002. You, oh, I want to... Yeah, because they make me sick. These people make me really, really sick. I don't have no love for them at all. There is no civil conversation with them because you're making me sick. You want to give justice to everybody, but when it comes to soul brothers and sisters in this nation, y'all got a problem. And you got idiot Negroes that go along with you. The hell with you and the hell with them. Then you want to talk about well, if you was a slave a long time ago, you deserve reparation. But see, you, the only reason why you said that is because you know those people from a long time ago can't come back and do nothing. So that's why you say that. If you thought they could, you would have something else to say the reason why they should not and deserve reparations. It's all right for the Jewish people to, to attain reparations. Just recently, not too long ago, the Japanese citizens, their families, who was interned during World War II, they were given reparations. There were some people, I think in Brazil, who got experimented on by the United States government. They just recently got reparations. Everybody is good to go on reparations except the black man and woman of America. Everybody got a problem with the soul brothers and sisters, us receiving reparations for for 5 um, for over 300 years at least of hell living in this country so let's not go back 300 years ago 500 years ago let's come up a little up to date what about jim crow the dogs that bit children and women and the fire hoses and being put in these jail cells like pigs and the murder and the lynchings since the 1920s. Just go out and hang a nigga anytime you feel like it. Oh, no reparations for that either, huh? The black farmers, soul brothers who were farmers, didn't get subsidized by this government. We are American citizens, and the government purposely did not subsidize any farmer that had dark skin. They just recently was given a, 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 a little bit of something something just recently then you had Tulsa Oklahoma Black Wall Street they called it and this government well not this government but the local government there that state dropped bombs on citizens 
that did not do nothing. The racists, the pink racists went in and destroyed the town, the, the black side of town because they was jealous because the soul brothers and sisters in Tulsa, Oklahoma was doing much, much better than they was. So they went in to destroy. What about reparations for Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street? That that was a lot. That, that was what that was 1930, the 1930s too, correct? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jim Crow, the 1960s. What? Be, well, before the 1960s. Jim Crow was a long, long time. This is how dirty the United States government was. After the Civil War. Oh, let me go back to slavery. My people was promised 40 acres and a mule. The government, here you are, you're going to set a people free, so you say. Actually, you set us loose. You did not set us free. Abraham Lincoln was talking about give them 40 acres and a mule. But when the new president and Congress got together, we ain't giving them jack. And then we worked our bus off, still became successful. Then these suckers turn around and stole or destroyed what we created. Woo, I will punch your damn lights out. For real. Get out of my face with your, your mess. Let's bring it on to modern times. The Chicago and Philadelphia police. They were imprisoning soul brothers for no reason. In Chicago, they was taking electric prods and sticking them in these men's testicles. Reparations? Reparations, anybody? That's up to date. That's not a long time ago. That's in recent times. Black Lives Matter. Why do we have a Black Lives Matter? Because you got these racist cracker police running around blowing unarmed soul brothers and sisters brains out. That's why there's a Black Lives Matter. Reparations? Or oh, That was a long time ago, right? Y'all a bunch of liars. Fake frauds. Hypocrites. You have a hatred for dark-skinned people in this country. You don't owe nothing as an individual. Unless, of course, your family did something. And it can be proven. But you as an individual, ain't nobody asking you for no reparation. Nobody. But the government made it legal for you to murder and for you to exploit dark-skinned people in this country for hundreds of years. Slavery was a lifestyle in the South. And you may not know it, but slavery also was good in other places, in, in parts of the North also, not just in the South. The whole country benefited from slavery. Corporations, free labor, that exists right now to this day. The government and these corporations that participated in slavery, they should be made to pay reparations right now. Not you as an individual. You didn't have nothing to do with it. But see, the thing about the reason why a lot of these suckers talk is because they don't want, they don't want us to have more than them. That's what it is. Because if we all of a sudden got the reparations that we deserve, our economic status will rise real, real fast. And you should not worry about it because these Negroes will give you your money right back to you. You don't have to worry about it. In a month, you, you got most of your reparations. The government, everybody got your reparations back because they're stupid and silly. So I don't know why you just don't play along with the, with, with the, with the go, just go with the groove. Give the reparations and the Negroes, these silly Negroes will give it all right back to you buying cars, you know, the Cadillacs and the Benzes and, and, and doing dumb stuff instead of healing what was harmed. And you don't have to be, yo, the victim don't have to be alive to receive reparations. You already know that. The family members get the awards. When somebody died in a car accident, their family. If somebody dies in a rock, their family gets the benefits, the pensions, all this kind of stuff. But any excuse, because you have a, a, a hatred for dark-skinned people born in America. Well, I hate your ass too. Take your merry, troublemaking ass on. I don't want to talk to you. You have sympathy for everybody except us. 
I don't have no sympathy for you can get the hell out of my face. Otherwise, you get, mess around and get punched in the face. That's the way I feel about it. Slavery was a long time ago. You're a damn lie. person, whether this person is real or fictional, makes no difference. Maybe this is the reason why we love Jesus. Because in this Jesus person, in the, in the belief of Jesus, the love coming from Jesus is real. The love coming from Jesus is sincere. You don't have to worry about that. Jesus loves you. There are no strings attached. Jesus loves you if you are a nigga. Jesus loves you if you are drunk, a drug addict, a hoe and a bitch, a thug, a thugette, a ratchet, whatever you find yourself in life, Jesus loves you. And then you're going to turn around and tell people, you shouldn't believe in Jesus. That's a white man. Jesus never existed. It makes no difference. When people are... are have been abused and they hurt in the inside. They need a relief. And the belief in Jesus gives them relief. Because if nobody else loved me, I know Jesus do. Jesus loves so much that you can do him wrong. Nail him to a tree and he talks to his father. And he tells his father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the kind of love that this Jesus has. And if you really want to help the nigger, if you really want to help the black man, soul brothers and sisters, that's the type of attitude that you have to have. You have to have the type of love that this Jesus represents. Even when they are, when the niggers or the black people so, brothers and sisters, when you when they reject your love and you are attacked, you have to be like that Jesus if you really love. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You have to have the same type of love that I felt for Mrs. Steptoe, for Ida, for your wife, for your husband, for your children. The same type of life the same type of emotional connection you have for your personal uh, biological relatives or, or your lover, you have to have for us as a people, but you don't. Your love has strings attached and you don't like this one and you don't like that one. That's not how it is with Jesus. There is no strings attached with Jesus. Jesus loves you no matter who you are. Where you, where you go. That's the kind of love. If you want to solve, really solve the condition of black people in this nation, if you really want the nigga to change, then that nigga has to feel loved. The same type of love that is felt, people feel that Jesus gives to them. Your love will be better because you are alive. If you can get people to feel your love for them, Jesus can't feel, can't return love back, but you and me can. And people are not stupid. Children are not stupid. Even a dog is not stupid. They know when somebody really loves them and not putting on a show. They know. Man. If we could only love ourselves, love our people. Well, I can, yeah, I love black folks, but so and so is a homosexual. So and so used to be a bank robber. So and so is a hoe. So and so, you don't love nobody. You don't love nobody, really. So you need to shut up with your lies. Because if you love, your love overcome everything else. You would be like the Jesus. 
you will feel the same type of love that you have for your mother, your family, your husbands and children, you would have for us as a people. And if your and if your family was gay or drunks or whatever you don't like, if you really love them, you're not just gonna throw them out into the streets. You want to help those of whom you love regardless to their condition. It is a wonderful thing to be in love. Being in love is, whoo, man. It's a great, great feeling. I would hope one day, soon, I could feel that for another human being of the opposite sex. <laughs> not, not, not of the same sex. I don't, I don't play that. If y'all do that, that's you know, that's all you. I still. I still love you. There's no strings attached with my love. I'm like the Jesus for us. I love you because I love myself. So if I love myself, I got to love you. And I love me with no strings attached. No, I don't like your lifestyle. I don't like the fact that you are a bank robber, a gang member. Or... There's a lot of things about you, no, I don't agree with, but that does not diminish my love for you. And I'm going to do what I can to help make us better. I'm going to include myself in this because we all are niggas. We all are sick. But, but he's more sick than me. Well, that's good for you. Then you heal yourself from your sickness and then you help those who are still sick. And you don't do that by making mockery of their sickness. Like some people come to me where you know black folks is lazy and trifling and uh, this and that and that. I don't want to hear that garbage. Take your ass away from me. Because see, I love us. You don't. You want to try to make us into something so you can prove something to some sucker out on the street somewhere. The hell with them. I don't, I'm not trying to impress no damn racist or some Chinese or the Japanese or anybody on this planet. I'm not trying to impress them. To hell with them. You want to try to impress somebody. Get the hell out of here. Move out. I want to say this quickly in my conclusion. Like I said, we're not going to be here very long. About love. I want to talk about the love of a black man to his woman. To the mother. There are a lot of soul brothers here that have lost that connection to soul sisters. They don't have any love. Why is that? I could, I could even assume that some of these young men hate their mother. Something is wrong somewhere when you don't like womanhood because there's nothing more than a man can love is his woman and i told you i tell y'all all the time i love womanhood period but of course the soul sister is number one because that's my that's my woman that's my sister that's me that's my other half that's me but i love womanhood period you have these guys here I don't know what their problem is. I can only assume, I can only guess. But I'm telling you, and I ask these, these young men, these soul brothers who have a problem, always talking about the black woman do this and the black woman do that. I ask them, was you breastfed or was you raised on Similac? You're going to tell me that you have love for your mother and your mother did not give you her breasts? She gave you a can of Similac? Infamil? That's your problem. That's the beginning of the problem right there. I'm telling you. These guys was raised on cow's milk and Similac and Infamil, these chemicals. They don't have that emotional connection to their mother Thus, they don't have that emotional connection to womanhood itself. It's not about falling in love with some woman. 
these girls or women, I want to find a lover. You have to fall in love with womanhood, period. She's just not somebody to lay down and you can hump on. That's not her purpose. Well, some of it. I mean, that's how we got here, of course. <laughs> but she's more than that. They don't have an emotional connection to the mother. Because when you are on that mother's breast, your body is feeding physically and you're also getting an emotional connection to your, to your mother. You're still connected to her heartbeat, her rhythms of her body. But when you are given a chemical in a can, what are you connecting to? That's why these guys, these men, have this hatred and dislike for womanhood, period. So recently you heard about this thing, the increase, folks are buying these, these dolls. And you might have better luck with the doll because that doll is the same thing as that can of Similac and Infamil. There is an emotional connection. You don't need one. Thus, you have no connection to life. If you can't connect to a woman, you don't have life itself. You've lost your soul. And many of these guys think that's a good thing. Oh, it's not a good thing. You are truly lost. But there are men like myself who will love a nigga. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm not going to make mockery of you. I want to talk with you so we can help help each other in this struggle to evolve from the nigga to this person that I call soul brother and sister so we can represent life 